Democratic Congresswoman Madeline Dean of Pennsylvania is a member of the House Judiciary Committee and she's with us now from Capitol Hill. Thanks for being with us. My pleasure. So your committee led by Chairman Nadler voted today to authorize subpoenas for the full unredacted Mueller report among other things. Uh, this is, so now it's an option, right? It's it's on the table it can be used. Why did you and your fellow Democrats think that it was important to do that now instead of waiting until the middle of the month, if not sooner, which is when the attorney general said he'll be releasing this report redacted with help from Robert Mueller? Well, Brianna, thanks for having me on. And I have to just mention to you, I've just come from a joint session uh, where the general secretary of NATO spoke to us about the important uh, history of our partnership in uh, NATO. And he talked about foreign foes. Uh, that we live in a dangerous world and there are foreign foes and we're stronger together. And so why would we put together uh, the request for a subpoena uh, today? Uh, we're doing our job. This is Article I oversight, important work that we have to do. The timetable is our own. The American people are entitled to uh, full disclosure of the report. Uh, the Republicans voted for that very thing, and the president uh, uh, wanted that as well. So in this world of chaos that is uh, this administration, everybody seems to have pivoted away from full uh, transparency of the report. We have a job to do in judiciary. Issue the subpoenas if they become necessary. You want, so you want the full report unredacted, right? That is correct, yes. Congress and is so, entitled to the full report. And so what, what Attorney General Barr is planning to release pretty soon is a redacted report. You don't know at this point how redacted it is, but is there a problem with that timeline? Is that you're seeking the possible use of a subpoena earlier than, he said mid-April or maybe sooner? I think really what we have is we have the subpoena power in place. Uh, certainly we want to work with Attorney General Barr, but we do, do notice that he thinks that he would be offering us a redacted version. We want the full report and the underlying documents. Uh, no redactions. Congress has the ability and has the legal right to see the entire report. Let's um, let's talk about health care because the president has supported this effort in the courts to entirely throw out Obamacare, but then after some big promises that he said Republican senators were hammering out a plan for an Obamacare replacement. We know from our sources they actually were not. He now says that Republicans are not going to release a plan until after the 2020 elections. And he's telling his party that this is actually a good issue for them. Let's listen. We have so much. They have health care right now. We have to take that away from it. We take that away. We take that away. We will not even come close. So here's the concept. We have to protect and cannot run away from a thing called pre-existing conditions. We can't do it. Do you worry that Republicans could take away some of the positives of Obamacare that Democrats enjoy politically from your party? I'll tell you what, our Democratic caucus won't let that happen. Uh, certainly, I worry. Can you imagine using this as a political football? The health care, the health and well-being and the lives, the very lives of Americans. Uh, last week, the president went through a set of chaotic steps. Uh, he was happy with the bar letter, pivoted to, I'm going to tear down ACA and I have a plan to replace it. Then he had no plan to replace it. Then he was going to shut the, down the border wall. Then he was going to end foreign aid. All the while, we have an inhumane crisis at our border, where children are still in cages, or as some of our reporters have said, in kennels. Uh, this is not the American way. And so for the president have, to have played, I think, absolutely foolishly with the notion of our health care uh, and the millions of people who have gotten coverage, uh, whether it's pre-existing conditions or kids staying on your coverage, uh, it's, it's a cruel joke uh, that this president is going through. I, I want to ask you about uh, a topic that has come up here recently. There is a record number of women in the new Congress, of which you're a part, and we're hearing them, some of them, speak out about incidents that they've experienced. You have Democratic Congresswomen Katie Hill and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez who have referred to some of these incidents as archaic sexism, and they're talking largely about offensive sexist comments that they feel are institutionalized in Congress. Do you see it that way? I'm not uh, aware. I have not talked to either of the representatives about uh, what has been uh, offensive to them. But you you uh, haven't I... experienced anything like they described just personally, which isn't, which isn't to cast any doubt on what they're saying, but just you personally haven't experienced anything like what they described? 
No, I haven't, but I do say, uh, whether it's sitting today at the joint session, uh, take a look at the Democratic side of the aisle, the beautiful diversity uh, that is our Democratic caucus with so many women, so many people of color. Uh, so uh, I, I uh, absolutely reject any sexism. Uh, none of my colleagues should have to suffer that. Uh, and so uh, I'm, I stand with them. What do you think is, you know, some of the things that they describe, they describe comments, they describe being mistaken as not members of Congress. Um, what do you think the best way is to deal with some of the problems they're describing? Just do your job. You know what I found? I found an exact opposite reaction that I believe is a cultural shift. Uh, that when I was walking with my husband in the Capitol, somebody came up to me recognizing that I was likely the congressperson. So actually, we're in the time of uh, great cultural shift, great diversity, lots more women serving. Uh, and if you don't mind, uh, I'd love to just talk about the substantive work that we're doing here at the Capitol. We have a lot of hot spots uh, in the world. We have a lot of hot spots in this administration. But I hope you'll see that in addition to the important oversight that we're doing in judiciary, we're also doing substantive work. Notice that we passed gun legislation. It's up to the Senate now to do something about that. We passed H.R. 1 which has to do with good governance and voting. Uh, we have instituted uh, protections for the ACA. That's the kind of work that we are doing here in Congress. We are not the, the uh, party or the Congress of chaos. We are uh, the Congress of getting substantive work done while we do our constitutional oversight. All right, Congresswoman Madeline Dean, thank you. Thank you, Brianna.